Alright, what's up guys? Then of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, the Scarender. And today going up against, of course, Bristol Bidoofs, or Eric, in a Wi-Fi battle, which of course, I've been somewhat nervous for because Eric is a really good player and we really only have close game. There's always 1-0s uh, back and forth. So going in here, I really was just begging for a win because this win might not mean as much for Eric as it does me because if I win, that means that I'm still in for playoff. If I lose, that means that I'm very unlikely to get into playoff. So having that in mind, I knew I needed to play my best here and just win any way possible, really. And good seeing Eric's team here, I was somewhat relieved not to see Gothatel because that means that hopefully that I can switch out freely as I want. And he seems to be playing a bit hyper-offensive here with both Victini, Lopani, and Greninja, which obviously are very potent threats for my team. We also have Registeel, which is obviously Rocker, and Rotom could be a Scarf set or a Defensive set. Uh, so that means Sandslash hopefully can do work against it. And of course Sylveon, which not necessarily is a threat, but is always going to be troublesome switching into because it does hurt. Um, so yeah, with that said, I'm going to lead up with Thunderous, which obviously Scarf, um, and uh, for this game in particular, if you want to see my complete set, make sure to actually check out the link down below with the analysis. So basically, with all that said, Thunderous is the smaller option to lead with, uh, since I am Scarfed, and see what I can hurt, hoping he leads with Greninja. So with that said, let's do this. So right, from the get-go, I am a bit unfortunate here. He will lead off with Victini. Well, that's fine, it also means that, obviously, a V-Crate is going to basically kill us. So I'm forced to switch out, so I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch. And uh, basically, I'm gonna scout out what it kind of set it is, and that really doesn't give it anything. Uh, I am in an area now where Dark Pulse could potentially take me out, but I'm gonna bring Brex because I do have a Shuffleberry in case I predict that it goes for a Brick Break. He will go for a U-turn, and that will hurt me so much. It really, really, really will. But luckily for me, he does bring the Law Pony. I mean, we plan for Law Pony, uh, have him protect on Tyranitar to pretty much force it to go for a high jump kick against us, uh, and then basically get to receive the damage on it. So, you know, Tyranitar is ready. This is what he was made for. And I'm feeling confident in this situation that I can pull this off. But man, if Eric wasn't such a great player and actually predicted that, and actually go for first turn fake out to scout whether or not I have protect. So basically, now my Tyranitar is a sitting duck against this guy. So now Sandslash, of course, my only mod to switch in. It does around 70% against me, but that's my only chance of actually living this guy. Luckily for me, Lopani see this when I even feel luckily and does a simple act like this. That's right, people, he missed the high jump kick, which is extremely unfortunate for, of course, Eric, because that means that I can now go freely for a knockoff and killing this Lopani. Uh, so he is now a sitting duck, and I get a massive momentum. Of course, Sand Slash freely in the sand. That's uh, not something you're simply gonna deal with. Now I go for knockoff. That's showing me that it is defensive, um, because Poison Jab would have Oko this guy, or with knockoff combination. Um, and sand if he was a more speedy variant, which he obviously isn't. I can't take this hit, and I see Leaf Storm coming a mile away, and it goes for Willow. And that works. That actually works. That isn't hurting our class as much. And seeing that, he potentially could switch in Registeel now, going for free rocks. And cycle for Volt Switch, I have Sludge Wave, but like I said, due to Registeel, it would be extremely risky and outright stupid for me of doing that. And, you know, I, of, of course, due to the prior mo prior ha prior things happening in this game, have the momentum to actually do a bit of a riskier place. And obviously, that didn't do a whole lot, which showed me that Registeel is Registeel, <laughs> obviously more special defensive. Uh, and that's okay, that's okay, we can deal with that. And I'm gonna now try to predict him and hope that he goes for rocks, which he does stay in, which is, of course, good. And the Earthquake will do so much. Like, that is so extremely much. And of course, I don't need the senses on actually speedier than the 
Radiant Steel. So he goes for rocks, that's okay. Uh, I do decide to go for a rapid spin here. Since it doesn't have a spin blocker, he can't paralyze me if it has Thunder Wave. The only thing he can do is basically go for Seismic Toss, which would push me down, but not by a lot. Not by a lot. So I get the rapid spin also, which means that obviously uh, the rocks are out of the field, which is um, important because Thunderous does kind of struggle with that. Of course, with no leftovers, it just can't switch in and out, and that's something I really want with my Thunderous. So I'm going to bring Aerocles here, of course, it goes for Leaf Storm, and Leaf Storm does a huge chunk due to a crit here, and uh, that is unfortunate, but at the same time it kind of gets me back, of course, with that miss on, of course, the high jump kick. And um, I'm, of course, going to go for a Volt Switch again, seeing that Registeel is very, very likely to come in again. It's... Uh, I have to make that call, and uh, I'm going to say like this. Since it did look like the first Volt Switch didn't do too much, I'm actually surprised it killed him. But, you know, obviously I'll take it, but at the same time, that was probably a mid very weird mid-max roll. But this leaves me, of course, to going to go for, of course, the Rex here again and get my sand up without actually any risk. And here comes the Sylveon. And Sylveon is extremely risky, he could go for Hidden Power Fire, I had that in mind, but just, I had to take a risk. So I'm gonna go for Omega Scissor or Vita Max. And this Hyper Voice does so much, but it's showing me of course that it isn't, or isn't, Specs at least. Uh, but at the same time here, I'm gonna take a risk and not go for a Bullet Punch. While Bullet Punch would kill him, uh, I thought that a U-turn might be smarter uh, because he was, of course, going to preserve his um, his Sylveon, basically. So I took a risk. Like I said, he could have had Hidden Power Fire and the damage didn't show me that it was Specs because Specs would have do slightly over 50% on a regular sister, but I would survive two Hyper Voices once I Mega Evolved. So, like I said, big risk, but it did pay off and I got the Rotom out of the way, which means his two defensive mods are now out of the way and that also means full. Yeah, like there is, uh, there is nothing coming in on this. There is no way. Uh, so it's gonna go for fake out, trying to get some turns away. You know, I get that. I think that is correct, correct play because he must get rid of the sand. As long as sand is going, there is no way that Eric can turn this one around. And he, of course, actually knows this. I'm gonna switch in edge because there is probably he's the only man that really is a sitting duck here and can't do anything. I get an unnecessary crit, which obviously, like I said is unnecessary because Wolf just kills things. So anyway, he's gonna bring back, of course, Law Pony, and that's alright. Uh, I myself is gonna bring in Tyranitar for the last time, setting up the sand, and basically a sweep with Southland. There is just basically, I'm gonna sack this guy, and um, he's gonna go for high jump kick again, and um, seriously, guys, this Law Pony, he doesn't want it. He kills himself in suicide. In acts of kindness, this Law Pony kills himself, such a honorable death against Tyranitar, which also means, as I said in my preview video, that I'm going to have Protect on this, basically, to scout the Victini, and of course, um, risking the high jump kicks for misses. So he's gonna lock himself the U-turn, that's alright, that means that we can go to Stoutland, and uh, Stoutland doesn't take a whole lot of damage from a U-turn, but here is also where I do kind of realize that this U-turn might do well more than I actually thought it would, and it actually turns out that this guy is banded. And I did not even take that into assumption that it could be banded. So he's gonna go to his free Damion, which of course is the Sylveon, and uh, Sylveon can take this return. There is just no way. So we're gonna bop the Sylveon, and the next one coming in, of course, is his last one, being, of course, his Victini, which is gonna get bopped by the Fulf. Um And yeah, that is pretty much the size of the game. Like. I really don't know what to say, and you know, I, I really need to be fair about this. I really, really, really do. So obviously it is a 6-0, but it's, it is far from a fair 6-0. It is far from it. Alright, you know, what do one really say after a game like this? Like, I've been juggling back and forth, you know, how to define this, and... Uh, well, let's just say this. Law Pony for Eric's side, brought the game to a screeching halt for him. Lopony ripped every chance of a possible victory with the first miss. I'll, I'll make it that easy because I'm firmly believing that is so. Uh, we actually talked about it for a little bit while we was joking about it and of course actually laughing somewhat, mostly due to 
well, to be honest, it is a 6 0, but it's extremely unfair 6 0. Uh, it also is uh, that it's good that this victory might not have, or that this loss didn't really matter too much to Eric as winning for me mattered for me because obviously now we're all, all are really looking to a possible playoff spot. Of course, I need to win one more, but I'm feeling a bit comfortable now. I'm feeling a lot comfortable now. But um, yeah, like I said, it's good that it didn't, didn't affect Eric in that fashion. It actually make his next game much, much more interesting. It actually really does. Uh, but with that said, um, like I said, the first miss does matter a whole lot because that meant that my sand slash was really healthy and his Lopin was extremely whittled down. I'm pretty sure that I would have gone for a knockoff anyway, but I would have lost around 70% to my sand slash and Jerem. Uh, that would have meant that I basically have three to four moves back on me, and I think I could go, like I said, for a knockoff on his Rotom, which would will o wisp my Thunderous, and then he would switch to Registry, well, we'll switch out back to Sand Slash, probably go for Earthquake again, he would have gone for Self Rocks, and I would have put him in a position where I would, would be forced to go for Rapid Spins, hoping I don't die to Life Orb, while he could just reset the, the Self Rocks and win the matchup, which would have meant the Stealth Rock would have stayed in, and also would mean his Law Opponent would have pressured my team much, much more. So, all in all, I really, really believe that Eric got extreme short end of this game, and uh, we don't really see what this game could have been. And I think that is what kind of kind of makes me mo the maddest most, because both me and Eric has extremely close games, and there is no way of me even denying that. I do love uh, going up against Eric, because it just brings such a hard time for me, but that's, that's what I want. I want to get better, and when the game decides the game for us, it really, really, really stinks, and uh, I don't think Eric deserves anything like that, and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, this game is so unfair, it's just, yeah, <laughs> obviously, you know, I'll, t I'll take the 6-0, I need to have that differential on my side, but uh, if anybody's gonna ask me if I 6-0 Eric, I will say no, because this was definitely not a game I should have won, or at least not winning like this. Uh, the second high jump kick might not matter so much. Uh, I mean, I would have still reset the sand but outside of that. Uh, Lopin was still kind of whittled down. It could probably fake out um, the sand turns all in all, but it would have fallen eventually if not even. I don't think it would have survived that pressure. I just I don't. And of course, with Scar Thunderous and still having killed you all, I would, which would have outspeeded uh, his 15. He says we know it's banded. I probably would have taken this game home, but I wouldn't necessarily see it as a. Uh, as a easy win at that point, it definitely would have been a more like a 3 or 2 at that point. But yeah, you know, that's the game. Uh, I guess we'll try to accept this any way we can. Uh, it's somewhat funny, I guess. Um, and like I said, Eric is a tremendous battler. So if you haven't checked him out, make sure to do so. He's going to upload, of course, this game too. And uh, yeah, like I said, he was a really good sport about it. And obviously, mostly due to that the game didn't affect him as much. And uh, yeah, I mean, we both actually know how this game could have turned out, and I guess we're both pretty mess pretty sad that that didn't happen, because it's actually been somewhat exciting, of course, battling each other. It's always a blast, after all. But yeah, it seems like this afterthought is longer than, uh, than the actual battle. Hmm, how about that? But yeah, I want to thank, of course, everybody for watching, and of course, make sure to leave a like, and uh, yeah, that supports this guy named Stoutland, and every like, equals one Pikachu rice form. I promise. Uh, so with that said, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye. No funny!